Okay, folks, you know your good luck couldn't have lasted that long. We're, we're back to Mr. Ugly here, but hey, you do what you gotta do, and here I am. This is Tail End Charlie. We're, uh, we're down to the last part of our 55th annual uh, AEA convention and trade show coverage. We're looking forward to uh, being able to conclude this today and get back together with you tomorrow about 1600 Eastern time. We'll be speaking to folks like Paula Dirks and Rick Perry, uh, Mike Adamson and so forth from AEA. We'll be looking at the regulatory environment for the avionics community. We'll be talking about uh, the scholarship programs that AEA is undertaking, the mission of AEA, and of course we'll be looking also at the future of the employment situation and where the techs of tomorrow are coming from. So we've got a lot of great topics online, as well as an opportunity to talk to some folks uh, in the community who had some big announcements this morning, Mid-Continent, uh, Becker, and a number of others. So uh, hold, on to your, uh, hold on to your saddles here, folks. We'll be back at, with you tomorrow about 1600. But in the meantime, uh, we had a press release come out the other day. It was uh, one of the things that Ashley mentioned on Airborne. And everybody got all excited about it because there are a tremendous amount of four-flight junkies out there in aviation land. And all of a sudden, we're talking, whoa, wait a second. Capability to get airborne weather to our four-flight. Okay, who do I have to kill? What do I have to promise? I want it. I want it now. Give it to me. So this was something that was very exciting. And we have an excellent opportunity, thanks to running into Hal Shavers here down in the hall just a little while ago. Brett Kobe is here from Sporty's Pilot Shop to talk about Apario's uh, app, if you will, and the hardware that goes with it for Stratus. Brett, first of all, welcome to Aero TV, and tell us what you got. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for having me, Jim. Uh, basically, we have a new portable ADSB weather receiver uh, called Stratus, uh, and this completely uh, portable wire-free box here uh, delivers ADSB weather products to ForeFlight, uh, things like Nexrad, METARs, TAFs. Airmets, Sigmets, uh, even real-time uh, TFRs are delivered to ForeFlight. Uh, and all this is done with a, a battery-powered box, a uh, very simple operation, uh, just one, uh, one button to turn it on, uh, put it in your aircraft, uh, connect it to ForeFlight via Wi-Fi, and go flying. It's really just that easy. So basically, so easy a pilot could do it? It's easy a pilot could do it, right. <laughs> but we're still kind of iffy on the journalist pilot part, so. <laughs> You'll have to get us uh, feedback on that. Oh, and, uh, God help you all. It. Uh, okay, well, first of all, how did this come about? Obviously, the, de the desire was there, but who did it? Why? W what was the genesis of this pro uh, product? Sure. Uh, you know, the iPad's only been out for a couple years now, and the, and the progress in technology and apps that have developed along the way has been incredible. Uh, so up to this point, the only way to get uh, weather on your iPad was through XM Satellite Weather uh, with a couple boxes and a subscription, uh, which works well for a lot of people a lot of aircraft. Uh, but we wanted a way to give uh, weather to the masses without a subscription uh, to take advantage of the FAA's next generation ADSB weather system uh, and do that in a portable box uh, that did not require aircraft panel power. Uh, so really uh, an easy easy to go go flying with box that you could throw on your, your glare shield and go flying. Uh, and we worked with ForeFlight on that uh, and they uh, wrote their app to, to really take advantage of, of Stratus' features. Uh, and you'll control the, buck, uh, the box through ForeFlight. And for the moment this is ForeFlight only? Correct, ForeFlight only. Okay. Um, talk about the hardware component. Sure. Uh, the box itself has a built-in ADS-B antenna, has a built-in WASH GPS, so you no longer need a separate GPS chip to run your iPad. Okay. Uh, Eight-hour battery. Uh, you can run it off of a, a cigarette lighter if you want to uh, choose that accessory. Okay. And for pilots uh, who might be flying uh, higher uh, flight level aircraft with electric windshields, uh, we do offer a, uh, an accessory antenna also to, so you can mount the box out of the way. All right. Cost? Uh, cost is $799. Okay. Uh, available at Sporty's, uh, Sporty's Pilot Shop, uh, sporties.com slash Stratus, and we are taking pre-orders now, uh, and the box will ship on April 23rd. Okay, so this is right around the corner then? Uh, right around the corner. And uh, no obnoxious certification issues or installation issues or anything else? No, uh, Sporty's, uh, you know, we test everything thoroughly and everything from light sport aircraft to jets and the flight levels, uh, turboprops. We've run the, the, the full spectrum to make sure it works properly, and it's works great everywhere. Just but, but has it passed the HAL test? It has passed the HAL <laughs> test. Uh, HAL flew with it about three weeks ago for the first time, and uh, he has an iPad now he flies with, and, and, and he loved it. So, yes, one button, turn it on, go, and he had next rad weather uh, right on his iPad uh, up in the air. Outstanding. Now, does the conventional version of ForeFlight uh, is that enabled right now for this, or uh, for do, you need a, do you need an additional app? Yeah, no, the, the ForeFlight will work now. The ForeFlight will be releasing an update here in a couple weeks okay. uh, alongside the release of the, of the Stratus when we begin shipping. Uh, so you'll see version 4.5 available uh, of okay. ForeFlight. It'll be a free update. Oh, uh, okay. so, so there's no extra subscriptions, no extra cost for uh, existing ForeFlight owners to, to run Stratus. 
799 for in-flight weather, that's getting away awfully cheap. It is, and it's it's really going to bring uh, weather to the masses, uh, we hope, in the iPad. Uh, and, and the functionality in ForeFlight, they've done an excellent job in uh, programming and bringing weather in every place you expect to see weather in ForeFlight uh, now is in the air as well. Okay. Well, when we talk generically about bringing weather, it's one thing. Specifically, what are we bringing? What kind of information? How is it being depicted? What use is it? Uh, Give me the whole spiel. Sure, okay, so first ADSB weather, uh, as dictated by the government, gives you NEXRAD, METARs and TAFs, AIRMETs, SIGMETs, uh, NOTAMs, PIREPs, TFRs, and uh, special use airspace uh, okay. times. Now, the NEXRAD is depicted on the maps uh, screen where you can overlay on top of en route charts, sectionals, world maps. The METAR and TAF is integrated in the airports page, uh, same place you'll find it on the ground using an internet connection. Uh, you can also overlay all the different components of the METAR on the map with color-coded symbols, you know, green for VFR, red for IFR, display ceiling, uh, cloud ceilings for all the airports around you, display uh, winds aloft also uh, is, is uh, broadcast by certain airports. Uh, and really a standout feature is the TFRs. Uh, these are updated every 10 minutes uh, okay. as part of ADSB. so now you have almost near real-time TFR data uh, in your airplane. Outstanding. So a tremendous amount of information with the one exception I keep talking to Hal and others about is the index of cuteness for the girls behind the airport desks at destination. <laughs> we haven't quite gotten that figured out yet. When you get that done, I don't care what you price it at, you're going to sell a million of them. <laughs> um, now, ForeFlight has done extraordinary work in uh, building an app that has become ubiquitous right now for the iPad market. They and, and a couple of others who have built uh, equivalent market share, just an amazing things for this. And you know, I've got everything on my iPad. The nice thing about my job is everybody sends me everything to try and work with and so forth. And it's certainly one of my favorites. I've got two in particular that I just personally wouldn't fly anywhere without. They've been truly amazing. Where does this go from here? Obviously, you've got the building blocks for something truly amazing. Are you in a position yet to really talk about where you want to take this product? No, and as I mentioned before, with the iPad only being out two years and to see where we are now is yeah. incredible. So if you can use your imagination, and we're doing the same right now for envisioning further uses of ForeFlight, integration of other accessories uh, to, to really make it a, a all-in-one feature, mm -hmm. feature app that, that really stands out. For the average pilot out there, run them through a flight and how you're utilizing the iPad now in the cockpit with this kind of capability. Sure, it, you know, it all begins on the ground uh, with ForeFlight. Uh, getting a weather briefing uh, through your Duwatts account uh, in, in the app, uh, or calling 1-800-WX-BRIEF for those who, who still do that, but you really don't need to anymore with the iPad. Thank God, I never <laughs> could get through anyway. <laughs> so, you're, so you're checking weather, uh, you can go ahead and input your flight plan in ForeFlight, all your waypoints, uh, arrivals, if, if necessary. Uh, so basically our consideration at that point, you're using internet for weather uh, at the FBO, uh, at your airport. Uh, so really from the time you taxi out until about a thousand feet in the air, uh, you're going to have you know, the weather that you downloaded from the internet. And Stratuston uh, and the ADSB weather will then give you weather roughly a thousand feet above the ground from then on. And then with ForeFlight's capabilities as an in-flight navigator, you have all your charts, you have sectionals, IFR and route charts, you have all your GPS position data being fed from Stratus, so time to destination, ground speed, all that kind of information. You've got airspace information on there. Uh, and then when you get to your destination for IFR pilots, you have instrument approach charts uh, that are geo-referenced and show your aircraft on the approach chart all the way to landing. Outstanding. Well, first of all, we, we this was a last minute request. I'm glad you were able to get down here. We can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Um, it's a product that, as I said, once the press release came out and especially once it was mentioned on Airborne, all of a sudden I'm getting these calls like, have you tried this thing yet? And we're looking forward to getting our hands on it down the line and getting a real world test and uh, giving it a try ourselves. But what I've seen so far looks it's exceptionally promising. But I love the fact that you know it's, it's a self-contained device. It's no big deal, no wires, no this, no that. Outside of external power, if you really need it, you're going someplace where the eight hour battery isn't enough. So uh, in concept, it looks like it's gonna be the answer to a lot of pilot prayers under the circumstances. It is, and we've been flying with it for several months now, and the, even with the panel mount uh, onboard weather system, we find ourselves using this now because the iPad interface is so much more intuitive to use in flight, and it's such a more, uh, more practical tool, tool to use on the airplane. Very good. Well, Brett, we really appreciate your time, and uh, I just cannot wait to manage to conjure one of these things away from Hal long enough to try it out. This is going to be fun to try it uh, down the line. Yeah, we'll get one to you. Thanks so much for your time.
Aero TV's live coverage of the 55th annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. 